I think rule number one of any video channel is don't insult your viewers. So if you don't mind, I'm going to rip that rule up because if you are one of those people who's been taken in by Matt Hancock in his performance on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, you are an absolute sucker. And I'm not talking about his laugh, which if you had to grow a Tory laugh under strict laboratory conditions in a bottle or something would sound a lot like this. <laughs> if I had to hear that, so did you. Showing that we politicians are normal human beings is actually really important. Yeah, that's right. What? Matt Hancock's just on a goodwill, public-spirited mission to, to stop us thinking MPs are a bunch of weirdos and he just happens to be being paid £400,000 for this entirely selfless enterprise. Anyway, here's him smiling to prove that point. Is Matt Hancock even telling the truth in his promo video? I've got absolutely no idea how I deal with snakes. I've never come across a live snake before. Yeah, sure. He's been a Tory member of parliament for 12 years and he's never come across a live snake. Both a lack of honesty and a lack of self-reflection. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Matt Hancock's plea for forgiveness. Now, much of this is, of course, centred on him snogging his girlfriend. Do you remember that? We don't have to see the imagery. Apologies, there was absolutely no justification for including that imagery. Um, this was a story, of course, or part of the story, of a government which imposed restrictions necessary to stop the spread of a deadly virus, which did, after all, kill many, many tens of thousands of people um, in this country, which was in charge of communicating those rules, often very badly, which itself was part of the problem. Um, and then, of course, systematically violated them, like rampantly violated them. And he, of course, was one of them. Now, his own transgression was profoundly hurtful for millions of people who suffered solitude, loneliness, who were forced to repress basic human needs and instincts, love, intimacy, affection, sex, for the national good, to save lives, to protect the National Health Service, which of course was his primary job, and not least, of course, to the 8 million people in this country who live alone, who suffered often, of course, the worst loneliness and solitude in those dark days. But it wasn't his most egregious sin, and not even close, and this is so important. Now, this is a man, of course, who played a key role in a Conservative government, which has now ruled this country for 12 long, horrible years. Now, it imposed self-defeating slash and burn cuts, and that has left us with the longest squeeze in living standards for workers since the early 19th century. Of industrialised countries, only Greece suffered a worse plight. Now, given he was the health secretary, it's estimated that there were 330,000 excess deaths, that's premature deaths that wouldn't have happened otherwise, because of the slash and burn cuts that he voted for, he supported and he advocated. But of course, what we should be really focusing on is, of course, the pandemic. Now, we were told by the chief scientific officer, Sir Patrick Vallance, at the beginning of the pandemic, that 20,000 deaths would be a good result made it clear, obviously, that's still horrible, but it would be a good result. Now, bad luck, because we've had around 175,000 deaths. That's around 8.75 times higher. Depends how you, of course, um, you judge these deaths. Some estimates are higher. Now, that was because that that the, 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 the number, the sheer number, higher than, of course, many other countries, because of the catastrophic decisions taken by the government, not least, of course, by the health Secretary Matt Hancock. Oh, but he's such a good sport. Now, one of those decisions was to discharge elderly patients from hospitals into care homes without tests, ensuring that the virus let rip in the most vulnerable sector possible. Now, Dominic Cummings, remember him, claimed in May 2021 that Matt Hancock lied to the Prime Minister about a promise to test patients discharged from hospitals uh, before they were sent back into care homes. Maybe you don't trust Cummings. I don't particularly either. I don't trust Hancock. I don't trust any of them. So maybe what should have happened is Hancock should have uh, waited for a public inquiry into COVID to establish the truth about avoidable mass death under his watch as health secretary before going on his TV re rehabilitation tour with all the lucrative dosh 
thrown at him. Now, I did myself try to challenge Matt Hancock about this particular scandal at Tory conference last year. Weirdly, he did not want to talk about it. Matt, sorry, Owen Jones here. Yes. Guardian, how are you doing? Uh, I'm not Do doing you, oh, Matt, come on. Do you regret sending people into care homes out of the early part of the pandemic? What would you say to the... the Matt, the, the parents of... The relatives of people who died in care homes, what would you say to them? Matt, a lot of people... One in 14 care home residents died of COVID in the first three months of the pandemic. What would you say to the relatives of those people? You're not going to talk about that? Okay, fine, great. One in every 14. One in every 14 or so care home patients died of COVID in the first three and a half months. So every of every care home, every 14 care home residents in the entire country, one of them died of COVID in a three and a half month period. But look at Matt Hancock eating those bugs with such gusto. <laughs> and what about the mass shortages of PPE? leaving frontline health workers desperately exposed during the pandemic with the government not using those weeks and weeks after the Wuhan outbreak to prepare for what was about to hit Britain by building up stocks of PPE, which they failed to do. And he, as health secretary, of course, holds huge responsibility, second only to the prime minister, Boris Johnson. A full house. <laughs> you did it. And what about our nurses? Do you remember that? We, we, we clapped gladly and actually, you know, full of love for what they did from our, from our porches, from our steps, from our balconies, from our windows. <laughs> the nurses who carried this country through its worst crisis since World War II, since the fall of Adolf Hitler, since bombs were pummeling the British urban landscape. That's what they did. They carried us through it with huge sacrifice. And what was their reward? A real terms pay cut. That is grotesque. So you have the prospect of nurses in this country who go to food banks. And Matt Hancock, the former health secretary, gets paid hundreds of thousands of pounds using the platform he got as health secretary to go and 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 whitewash his reputation on national television and become a celebrity. Are you not a little bit nauseated by this? I find that slightly more sickening than having to eat a kangaroo's anus. There's a lot here to be said about the rehabilitation of monsters. You see it all the time. George W. Bush in the United States of America, a man who illegally invaded Iraq and reduced it to blood and chaos, who presided over the beginnings, of course, of the calamitous war uh, in terms of US involvement in Afghanistan, two decades in which huge numbers of people died, and for what? Uh, who oversaw Guantanamo Bay, who oversaw torture and all the rest. And yet, oh, he handed, he handed Michelle Obama a, a suite at a funeral and everyone went, oh, look how cute that is. And now he's treated as a, a, a great statesman in the United States because he's less vulgar on Twitter than Donald Trump. Or the likes of Tony Blair. Again, the war crimes of Iraq, notwithstanding, he's treated on television as though he's, again, a learned elder statesman who gets a knighthood. This is why we never learn from the past or we don't learn enough from the past because people responsible for horror, and we are talking about horror here, they're not held to account. There's no accountability. There's no judgment. Yeah, they might get a bit of crap now and then. They might face the wrath of public opinion in the street. But over and over again, they get huge amounts of money shoveled into their bank accounts. They get celebrated by people with power and influence. And that is why over and over again, the same tragedies of history repeat themselves because we never hold those who commit terrible crimes and injustices, and I'm talking about moral crimes here, because obviously presiding over mass death in this country isn't a crime. Having some cannabis in your pocket, maybe that's a crime. Maybe getting a bit of cash in hand when you're benefits, that's a crime. Presiding over mass deaths? No, 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 no. Crime is for the little people, as it turns out. That is why we end up in this mess over and over again. 
So to loop back to where I began, if you are in any way being being suckered in, being somehow beguiled by Matt Hancock's performance, oh, he seems all right after all. He's only human. You are a sucker and you should be embarrassed of yourself because your attitude allows monsters to be rehabilitated and for terrible, terrible injustices to be repeated over and over again. So, a mild plea. Don't fall for it and don't let the likes of Matt Hancock get away with it. Please like, subscribe and support us on patreon.com forward slash ownjones84.